What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Moose episode 128. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Turford, alongside the ghost with the most, Drew McMillan. Uh, good afternoon, Ryan. Good morrow, sir. Uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's afternoon for us, so let, let's just stick with You that. know, in Pacific time zone, Drew, it is still technically the morning yeah. for some people. Presently in As of the I mean, first of all, Drew, you don't know what time the listener slash viewer is listening or watching this. That is true. Good morning. Good evening. Um, happy good afternoon. Yom, happy yeah. Yom Kippur. I, like, it could be anything. Yeah. You could be coming from anywhere. I mean, they could, in theory, be listening to the Game Moose podcast live each and every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time, available at game-moose.com and podcast services around the globe, including iTunes, Spreaker, not Spotify. They don't like us very much. They don't really like a lot of podcasts. Yeah, well, it's not Spotify that doesn't like us. It's that we don't like Spotify in this particular case because Spotify wants our money and we don't want to give it to them. So. Well, well, no, that's uh, SoundCloud. Oh, that's Spotify, right. SoundCloud. Spotify just doesn't let anyone on there. It's invite only. They invite you oh, to be on this. Okay. Well, they, they haven't invited us. So. No. But, you know, the invite, you know, we're, we're ready to join Spotify whenever you want Spotify. Sure. You should yeah. have to call us. Yeah. Pick up the phone. Yeah. We'll send you our RSS. Just go fucking nuts, dude. Although – Unlike Spotify, if you do like us, you yeah. can read us over on iTunes. It really helps out the us uh, or review the podcast. Give us a thumbs up on the video, like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. All that YouTube stuff that Ooh. a YouTuber would normally say, but yeah. this isn't a YouTube show. No. Except for the fact that it airs on YouTube and it's a show. We put it on YouTube, but <laughs> that's just kind of one of those things. We're on all platforms. We we're are on the a, platforms. We're a multi-platform uh, media. Except SoundCloud. I'm looking at you, SoundCloud. Yeah. Uh, no I'm just SoundCloud. pointing my old man finger at well, I mean, SoundCloud. It's weird. There are a bunch of for, for those of you who are wondering, there are a bunch of podcast services out there, like host ser- hosting services that like want to take your RSS and then charge you money. It's like I've already done all the work to like host my shit and put it on a feed and have the knowledge to do that and. Like, I've done the work. I don't need to then pay you again. But they want to host you on a real service, Drew. Yeah, I know. Real service. So, whatever. We're on Spreaker. If you're ever wondering why it's not the latest episode, that's why. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, we're two and a half weeks out from E3. It's been a very, very quiet week for the most part. In yeah. The we, we, had, things, we had that but. post E3, like like, like the, the week of E3 itself, and there's a post E3 thing where everyone sort of like has had time to digest what's happened. Yeah. And then now everyone's just kind of quiet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, games are coming out at least, so at least that's that's something. Yeah, I mean, games this, are back to coming out. When we get into uh, new releases this week, there's actually a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, also, the the Brock the Brock McLaughlin away this weekend. He's a ghost this week. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's off uh, doing some something celebratory now, uh, be, living his best dad life, as he says. So may his spirit forever haunt these halls. That's what we say whenever someone when someone's not here because they're a ghost. So you're the ghost with the most. You're fit, but your corporeal essence, at least, is still inhabiting this room. Sure, Brock's Brock's ghost is not here. Even I, he's, I, he's haunting the halls, but he's not actually here. I I, I do like that you have um, just developed an elaborate mythology for <laughs> the the spectral nature of. People who are aren't present during the, the podcast. Hey I'm man, sure I had to come up with something interesting because otherwise it's boring just to say someone's not here yeah. and then leave it at that. You gotta yeah. you gotta have fun with it, you know. Uh, speaking of having fun with it, Drew, on today's show, we are going to have fun with it because I'm going to tell you all about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 on the Game Boy Color. Uh, also, we're going to talk about Hitman and Octopath Traveler. We're also going to talk about Life is Strange 2 a little bit. Uh, but first, Drew, there was a big thing that came out of E3 that, that's sort of still reverberating in our gaming community. The effects are still being felt, as one would say. Yeah, this is kind of a weird one too. And we we gr- we briefly glanced over it a little bit last week, but this week I really wanted to make sure like we sort of talked about this a lot more. We talked about a little about about this topic before, but that was like fucking like a year ago. Yeah, well, we have I mean, a lot of new listeners. Th- th- also, things have changed. Things yeah. have changed in the landscape. So. The landscape. The landscape changed. of. Fortnite. Yeah. Fortnite, everyone's favorite game. If Brock was here, he'd tell you how good Fortnite is because Brock's a big fan of Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, So Fortnite, as we learned after the Switch version went live during E3, uh, Fortnite accounts, if you've ever played on PS4 at all, your Fortnite account is locked to uh, your your PS4 only uh, or PC. Now, the thing about it is why that's a big deal because a lot of people don't just hear that and don't know why that's a big deal. So Fortnite, unlike a lot of other games – uh, well, like a lot of games, has microtransactions for uh, cosmetics and other things. You also get progress that unlocks more things. For example, if you buy the Fortnite Battle Pass, 
you basically have a bunch of challenges. And if you uh, fulfill those challenges, you unlock all kinds of really cool stuff for your character. And all those rewards go across your epic, epic account across all the platforms you play on. So, for example, if you pay for it on PS4, let's say, um, and you get by the Battle Pass that, there and unlock all that stuff, all that stuff unlocks on the PC version of Fortnite and the iPhone and uh, Android version of Fortnite. However, as we discovered, um, and, and this has sort of been a long thing, a thing for a long time with PlayStation specifically, is that the PS4 version, once you touch it, you can't use that account on Xbox. And now that Switch is here, now everyone <laughs> suddenly cares. When that had been a thing with Xbox for a while now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the most common one was, yeah, people picked up their Switch and were like, yeah, now I can play Fortnite on the go. And then yeah. got that message saying, um, nope. Yep. Uh, which is kind of weird. Especially because I guess the Switch is like everyone's sort of second console. Yeah. Like a lot of people who own a Switch already have like a PS4 or an Xbox One. Yeah. And a lot more people probably have PS4s than Xbox Ones. Yeah. So which is why there's such a big outcry. It's like it. the Switch is the new Vita. Yeah. It's like the, the Switch is new Vita. In fact, the Switch, I said it once famously last year, is everything I wanted out of the Vita to be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I love the Vita so much. Truly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you can definitely play together on Xbox and Switch and all the other platforms. In fact, if you you create a new Epic account now on Switch or Xbox, you can play on every platform and just never touch PS4, and you're you're totally good to go. Um, so, Drew, first of all, what do you think about this in general? Are, do people have a right to be pissed off about this? It's annoying. It's certainly it's grossly inconvenient, especially because there was no announcement. Yeah, There's no one who said, hey, this is what's happening. So it didn't yeah. step up and say, oh, by the way, this is our policy. Um, uh, uh, Epic Games didn't step up and say, hey, just heads up, here's what's happening. Yeah. That would just, if, if no one told me this was going to happen, it would annoy the fuck out of me. Yeah, like you would have no, no idea, like when you created your Epic account a year ago or two years ago, or if your Epic account like mine has yeah. been around since Gears of War 3, mm-hmm. like – you wouldn't have known that yep. it would have been locked to PS4. Once I mean, the, the, the other part of it, this too, is like there's all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of purchases and stuff that are associated with that account. Yeah. So that means that you don't get to enjoy your sick cosmetics on your yeah. Switch that you earned by spending a bunch of money in the PS4 your version. V-Bucks. Your, your V-Bucks. Your V-Bucks. If you dumped a ton of V-Bucks on that that fish head guy, yeah. you don't get it on your Switch. That's a fucking bummer. Yeah, it's really like, weird. That should they should be completely separate. Like mm-hmm. my epic, that was that was or always it seemed to be the point of those things is that's why we had all those yeah. millions of services that drive me fucking crazy. Your your <clears throat> Ubi Central account and your EA uh, Access sp- account, Special or Times, EA, or, uh, or know, Origin Origin service. Yeah, I don't remember like, what their subscript your their rewards were. Yeah, the Activision it's like EA rewards or something. Yeah, the Activision Turkish baths. I don't know. Like <laughs> Activision whatever. is smart enough not to have one of those accounts because they don't want you to save any money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, that's a, that's a fucking bummer, man. I'd be so annoyed. Uh, it didn't happen to me because I didn't play Fortnite on my PS4. Yeah. Uh, nor have I played it on my Switch yet. But you know what I'm not going to do now? What? Play Fortnite on my PS4. Ever. 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 Yeah, because uh, the places I'll play it are on my Xbox and on my, my yeah. Switch. Yeah. So that I can make sure that, I'll you know, regardless of where I'm playing, I'll have my shit. Yeah. Because uh, don't get me wrong, you don't earn a lot when you're not when you're not spending V-Bucks. Because, again, I played tons of Fortnite and never spent a dollar on V-Bucks because I've never felt like I wanted to do that. But, but if I did that, like, that would be a big piss off. I know Brock get, has dumped a whole bunch of money into Fortnite. Yeah, you still get drops and shit, right? You still get... No, there's no loot boxes or anything either uh, or, or uh, drops. You earn some stuff while you level or if you play at specific times, like, they have events and stuff. Right. Um, but for the most part, it is mostly through the Battle Pass or through paying for but stuff. But, like, you could have got some drop lucky oh, in some lucky way, right? Like through, I don't know, regardless. There could be one super fucking dope thing that you have regardless yeah. if you spent it on money or not that you don't get to show off to your Switch friends yeah. because now you can't play it on your Switch because it's locked to your PS4, which is garbage. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, because it's just so weird that they didn't warn anyone about this. No. Even, and to be fair, like, they probably didn't when Fortnite first came out because the, when – Fortnite saved the world, which was the sort of the PVE mode came out. Like yeah. no one, there were no plans to even make it cross-platform. So this was never a thing that I, I don't think they ever thought about. Um, and not only that, but um, at that time you could, your Epic account, your purchases weren't even going to PC even yeah. um, or anything like that. Like you had the same Epic account across all three accounts, but I guess there must be like, from what I've heard, there's something 
buried in the fine print that mentions this now. Like they updated the terms of service, I guess, a long time ago to add this. Uh, add this little clause saying, hey, by the way, if you've ever logged in on PS4, it's locked there forever. Um, but it's just so weird to me that they just wouldn't – like, so no one at Sony or Epic has come out and said this. And we don't even yeah. know whose fault it is because a lot of people are blaming Sony. But we don't even know if it's a combination of both or if it's Epic as a way of protesting the the way, the fact that Sony doesn't want to do crossplay. Like who who knows? Mm, yeah. We don't even we don't even know the full story. Yeah, we don't know what mo- motivated it. Like I was hoping between last week and this week we would have heard something from someone. Oh yeah, but the, nothing, nothing. Yeah, we've heard nothing. We heard something from like a Sony ex Sony uh, chairperson who said, "Yeah, it's just because of money." Yeah, but but who knows if that's actually the reason? Yeah, um, I mean they they have some insider knowledge, but not all. Yeah, right. They're privy to sort of what their philosophy is, but not necessarily what their direct philosophy uh, or policy is on that individual thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's interesting because this kind of blew up even more than this, because it, it even more as a, as a broader conversation, it brought up cross play in general, right? right? That, that That is, that is in the zeitgeist, as you said, before we started the it's podcast. It's like you knew I, where I was going to segue to. Yeah. So, I mean, even bigger than this is it started with Fortnite, but then like, Nintendo and Microsoft just got the ball rolling, yeah. trolling fucking PlayStation hard. Yeah, this week uh, with Minecraft. Yeah, with Minecraft. So they said, you know, there's the whole thing of like, let's build together and, uh, uh, you know, uh, advertising um, uh, uh, cross play between um, uh, Microsoft platforms and between Nintendo platforms uh, specifically for Minecraft. Yeah. We're talking the new version of Minecraft on the Switch. Yeah. Because there are multiple versions of Minecraft <laughs> yeah. on the Now, Switch. mind you, we didn't know this last week, but yeah. if you purchased Minecraft Switch Edition yeah. already, you get the new version of Minecraft for free. That's dope. Yeah. So, That's great. And no matter which one so, you so buy. You, you, you can't accidentally it. buy the wrong one. Yeah. Or if you do, you, you get the other one for free, so or, it doesn't matter. Or likewise, it won't let you buy it twice. Right. Which is which is awesome. Yeah, that's that's a that's a classy move. Yeah, in fact, Major Nelson this week at a week tweeted yep. out a picture of him earning Xbox achievements on his Switch. That's right. You you can do that. Yeah. What fucking planet are we on, man? <laughs> I don't know, but it's really really crazy that yeah. there's that kind of crossplay. So game. yeah, so like you can be playing Minecraft on your Switch, and I can be playing on my Xbox One X, and, and we can be be playing multiplayer together, building yeah. stuff together. Which I think is great. It also works that way with PC and mobile too. So like, there's yeah. like anyone who has Minecraft at this point can play together, which is awesome. Like that's that's really awesome. I mean, I only think this is good for video games, right? Yeah. Like, this is great. This just means that like it gives you more choice about how you want to play the games that you love, but mm-hmm. it still lets you interact with people. It doesn't create silos. We've always talked about how much exclusives kind of rub us the wrong way in certain ways, right? Like, yeah. um, and and this this whole idea that there's more people together. Uh, having more fun together just to me it seems awesome well especially for yeah. big multiplayer communities like destiny for example yeah. imagine if destiny was cross play drew like how big that community like how much bigger that community would be yeah if it if you could play with other consoles imagine uh, imagine this like we were going to do a raid yeah uh, and i came over to your house uh, and you connected with some other friends uh, uh, like online and i did too and i brought my switch and i was playing destiny on my switch while you were playing on the TV, and we were talking back and forth with one another. Meanwhile, we had like a vent server going or something while we were talking mm-hmm. to everyone else, doing our, our, our dope ass like fucking strategies. That'd be so much fun. Yeah. Like, I feel like it just opens up more possibilities mm-hmm. and it lets Nintendo be Nintendo. It lets Nintendo do what they're good at. And Microsoft recognizes, hey, the, the Switch is its own thing and it, mm-hmm. it doesn't compete with us. It just means we can sell more copies of Minecraft. Yeah. And the more copies of Minecraft we can sell, the more people want to be, buy Xboxes because yeah. and because they want to have that experience too. So. Especially because Microsoft, like Microsoft owns the Minecraft IP. Yes. They don't even have to publish it on Switch, but they they put. I mean, they see dollar signs. Yeah, they're like, like, why not? Minecraft is, is one of those things that lives and dies by how many copies it can sell. And they just keep being able to sell that game over and over and over and over again on multiple platforms. Yeah. So good for fucking them. Literally every platform yep. under the sun, including the <laughs> yeah. Yep. Has Minecraft on, but it. not crossplay. Yeah. Um. And then I mean, Rocket League also works the same way. Where yeah. not only that, but also like Fortnite, your your account for Rocket League's the purchases for that are cross platform as well. Yeah. Except with Sony, which is weird. Yeah. But uh, I, like Sony, just do it, man. Yeah. Like just just play in the pool with us. You yeah. know. I can. Mean, you know, I, can, I get that. Like uh, because uh, they're ahead, I can understand yeah. their position. And that and that was what. Uh, 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 Jeff Grisman had a, a conversation with Phil Spencer where where Phil was like, look, 
I can tell you this, if we were the like if we were way ahead, we would probably be thinking a lot differently. Mm-hmm. We we would be making different calls. Yeah. He said like no doubt. He says he's like I respect Sony for doing that. You know, like they're making a business decision and they're making that decision based on where they are in the market. Right. And even at that, Sony especially, I mean, it's weird that they're they're that concerned with Nintendo cuz they more directly compete with Microsoft. Right. Right, and at this point, they've ground Microsoft into the dirt thoroughly on this generation, yeah. right? So, and it might have even be when they initially set that up to sort of block uh, non PC or mobile users with Epic accounts. That that clause might have just rolled over with the Switch, yeah. and it, they might not even been thinking specifically about Nintendo. They might have just had that stance with Microsoft, and mm-hmm. then just applied it to any other system that yeah. wasn't PC or. Handouts. So who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm happy that Microsoft and Nintendo are playing ball. Well, I guess this is only good for yeah. – if you play video games and you like video games, it's great news. Yeah. Uh, and then the, 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 the first half of that um, about Sony basically locking down your Fortnite account, that's only – I feel like bad news for gamers anyway. It might be great yeah. for Sony, but it's bad for the rest of us. Yeah. Well, and again, it just sort of puts it's, – it's bad for the company's image, I guess. Uh, I, yeah. It's I bad for optics, especially with a game like Fortnite, yeah. which is literally the biggest game in the world right now. Yeah. It, it, it's bad because, again, a lot of people – again, I um, I just went home to, to London – uh, by where um, my family is, and people were asking me who know nothing about video games. Hey, what's this Fortnite thing I keep hearing? It's like the the Fortnite issue with PS4. Why should I even play this on my PS4? Yeah. Like at this point, like a lot of it, like the new word's getting out there to casual people. Yeah. Not even like hardcore people like us who, of Ooh. course, it upsets us because we're ingrained in this ecosystem. And we are, and yeah, we're multi platform people, right? Yeah. Like we want to play everything on everything so that we know what the experience is like. Yeah. Not only because that's what we love as gamers, but that's what we want to talk to you guys about what right. those different experiences are like. Um, so yeah, it sucks. It yeah. fucking sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think the thing that encapsulated this whole thing the best, especially the Fortnite thing, was the one of the last great tweets from, from the fake Kaz Harayakal, oh. which is announcing the the latest PS4 exclusive, your Fortnite account. <laughs> oh man, yeah, That's so good. Yeah, that was uh, that was the sickest burn. I miss I miss fake Kaz Harai so much. Yeah, yeah, he's with us always, Drew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so then what do you, do we think we're eventually going to get to a point where cross play is mostly ubiquitous across third party platforms eventually, you, you like, know, like next generation, maybe here, here's when it's going to happen. Yeah. When it hits Sony in the pocketbooks. Yeah. When, when, Sony's, when Sony's behind next generation somehow, when Sony stops selling hardware specifically because of this issue, then they'll make it. Okay. Then they'll, then they'll listen. Right. Then they'll say, "Oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 we were wrong on this whole crossplay thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should be doing it. Uh, please buy our hardware." Um, if they see if they see sales drop in uh, you know hardware or software, if, if people right. start like Tony, yeah, yeah. If, well, if people start leaving uh, the like the Fortnite in droves from the PlayStation because of this, mm-hmm. then they're going to have a problem because the reality is Nintendo's install base on the switch is pretty fucking good now. Yeah. Right. Well, it's not even just install base too. attach rate. is also super high on, yeah. on switch as well. People who are on switch buy games, which sends a big message to publishers. That's why v- the Vita as sort of neglected as it was by major publishers. That's why indie developers kept pumping out tons of games on it because, because it's, attach it's rate was so good. Yeah. People would just buy everything on mm-hmm. it. And, and that's kind of the way Switch is now. That's why there's so many fucking games on the eShop, which, again, when we get to new releases, you'll see that in droves this week. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm hoping next generation, I'm hoping that eventually, like, this is just a thing we won't have to have to talk about again. I mean, the reality but is... It's eventually it, a thing. If, if, you, if, you want, if you want to see change, uh, certainly Sony will listen to you, mm-hmm. right? If enough people speak up and say, hey, we really want this feature, man, Sony will... We'll listen to you. They'll make it happen. I mean, yeah. remember all the stuff that was happening when there was all the negative press about the Xbox always being online and about like the whole like yeah. rumors about used game sales and stuff like that. And or even the that, most recent example like Battlefront. Yeah. Like look how much that game has changed since they the or when it since it came out last year. Yeah. Um Especially like that was truly reflected at the EA press conference as yeah. well, even. Well, and, and it was interesting because um as I had predicted uh, I was watching a bunch of giant bomb panels, and yeah. there there was one one in particular where it was like a bunch of like uh, industry insiders, and they were like, "Yeah, uh, as soon as that thing happened with Battlefront, they were, you know, there were at least 
well, all the major publishers had at least five studios where they were going like, uh, hey, hey, hey. Get rid of all the fucking loot boxes yeah. and then put out a press release saying we always hated loot boxes. Right. Right? Like it, it was happening. Yeah. Like you – that that was such a shitstorm. Right. And if people kick up enough of a fuss about this, Sony will change their tune. Yeah. Um, you know, but it really has to th- – that yeah. that movement has to come from from yeah. from fans and has to – it has to be there has to be a, 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 a enough of them out there. And it has to come from more loudly. than just the main Fortnite community. It yeah. has to be people outside that community as well. Mm-hmm. Um, fun fact about Fortnite as well is this hasn't been officially announced yet, but it, it actually leaked. Thank to our thanks to uh, Walmart Canada and some other websites, of course. Thank you, Walmart Canada, again for being awesome as always. Yeah. Um, there's a Fortnite PS4 bundle coming next month cool. <laughs> that comes with v bucks and some other stuff so just to just to cap this off so there you go <laughs> if you were thinking of buying this and the crossplay thing is an issue to you don't buy it don't buy that yeah. don't buy that ps4 yeah i mean as good go. as that ps4 pro looks because it's just a standard ps4 with nothing fortnite on it yeah just just don't buy it it's got a llama on it or whatever I'm not, I'm not saying don't buy it i'm just saying don't buy it if you want if you care about this yeah if if, 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 if it's important to you yeah, if you want uh, if you want crossplay to happen, then one of the ways to do it is by sending Sony a message and saying, "I'm not going to buy your stuff if you're going to if you if you're not going to let me play with my friends on other consoles." Exactly. And and if it's something you don't care about, then go buy it. Yeah. You go right ahead. You know, I'm not talking about you. Gotta, you got to get those V bucks yeah. with your console. Sure. Cool. Yeah. All right. Top two, Drew. Yeah. We the World Health Organization. Who? Who? <laughs> They're the people that come up with all the diseases, Drew. For layman's terms, I guess. Uh, I don't know. The, they are an organization. They do things. That talks about um, uh, diseases uh, of various types, you know, viral. And in this case, we're talking about mental health. Yeah. Uh, so they they are not the exclusive uh, uh, sort of like uh, – they're not the only body. That yeah, determines they're, they're 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 not the only authority on this subject matter. But Ryan, yeah, I have bad news. Yeah, according to the World Health Organization or WHO, yeah, uh, you and I probably have a mental disorder. Maybe. Yeah, there's a good chance. Well, I don't know. Are we? Are, do we qualify as being addicted to video games? Because no. that is the disorder we're talking. That's about. It. that's what we're talking about. The the, the World Health Organization formally uh, added to their list of uh, addictions and compulsions. What they called video game addiction, yeah. uh, which is something that's interesting. And we talked about this, I think, because th- this first came up like six or seven months ago. Yeah, you know, we talked. It was about a while ago. A while, yeah. It was a long time ago. I remember. I don't even remember exactly when. Because uh, yeah, they they'd classified that, but it hadn't been in, uh, become official until this week. Yeah. So uh, the World Health Organization, what they did was they included gaming disorder, as they called it, within the 11th revision of their international statistics, classifications of diseases and related health problems in June of 2018. Right. Now, it's important to note that there are two bodies, uh, uh, two sort of largely respected bodies in regards to um, uh, mental health. The other one is the American uh, Psych- uh, Psychiatric Association or the APA. Right. And the APA publishes something uh, known as uh, the uh, DMS-5, also known as the – excuse me. I'm going to pull it up because I always forget. Uh, the the DSM-5, excuse me. Uh, it uh, The DSM-5 is the Diagnostic and Statistics Manual of Mental Disorders. Uh, That's and, a mouthful. Yeah. So the and, – and, and presently it is not included in – the DSM-5. Right. So the American Psychological Institu- Institution or Psychiatric Institution or Association doesn't recognize gaming disorder as its own mental health uh, uh, thing. Uh, thing, whereas the World Health Organization does. Right. And they defined video game addiction as um, uh, uh, it's uh, a comp- uh, compulsive gaming uh, that includes socialization mood swings, diminished imagination, and hyper-focus on in-game achievements to the exclusion of other events in life. Right. Um, you got to get those trophies, I guess. Yeah, uh, sure. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. So, this is I mean, this is interesting mm-hmm. in so much as that I, I think both you and I, um, we, we've been around for a while now. Yep. We've grown up with video games. Yep. Um, both you and I have, have seen... 
I think what we could both say was, has been, you know, people who have had relationships with video games that were self that were destructive to themselves Absolutely. in their personal life. Uh, I had a friend who was very, very into EverQuest. Yep. Um, and as a consequence, I mean, the, the Ever. The, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it was EverQuest's fault. No. Uh, it, it may or may not have been. Uh, uh, EverQuest might might have just been a representation of other issues he was having. But um, that friend, he he played EverQuest at the exclusion of everything else. Right. Um, he met his partner in EverQuest, and they married in EverQuest. Yeah. And he dropped out of high school, and. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, didn't pursue the the career path that he was hoping to pursue because of it, and a few other things. Yeah. Um, I don't know where he is now. I lost track of him. He lost a lot of friendships uh, uh, through this because, again, he his the most important friendships were the ones he had online and not right the the ones in person. To yeah. be fair, he and I never got along super well. Yeah. Uh, so it was not a surprise to me that we drifted apart. But right. uh, I I don't know if any of my other friends stayed in touch with him. Uh, the last I heard, he was not living his best life. Uh, he was still struggling with with challenges. So, and you you've known some people. I mean, yeah, you're, I, you're you're active in the WoW community. That's a little bit infamous. And yeah, they, like MMOs kind of get a bad rap for this, but I right. don't know if it's exclusively their. Fault. I don't I don't think so either. In in uh, your friend's case, exactly. I don't think it always is the MMOs community. In fact, a lot of times when I would communicate with people on WoW, yeah, because uh, I I used to have a ton more friends who played WoW. I don't. Most of them have sort of moved on and done other things. Even though I'm still there, mm -hmm. um, like a lot of times we would just sit up and uh, like even if we weren't playing the game, like our character would be sort of doing their thing. But then we would be on voice chats just talking to each other and hanging yeah. out. Like that was more what that experience was like for me. Yeah. Um, playing that game, I wasn't really. I didn't feel like I was there talking to them because of the game. I met them through the game, but for the most part, the game was like turned off or in the background while I was interacting with them on yeah. a social level. Yeah. Um, however, I have seen that for before with World of Warcraft specifically with a family member yeah. who became uh, really – who became – who very much fit this model. Right. Um, like, that the, that who describes – he basically ignored everything else in life except, except uh, World of Warcraft and right. basically made it – uh, is a thing and he was not in a good place for a long time and uh, we were really worried about him not and again someone uh, like me I can sort of understand where he he how you fall into that trap especially if uh, you're still you're suffering with other uh, things like depression and everything else yeah um, it's easy to fall into that trap um, because again a game like World of Warcraft for example or any other engro highly engrossing video game really won't get its hooks into unless you're you're very vulnerable. You're in a very vulnerable state. I think. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's their suggestion here as well. Mm -hmm. um, is that uh, uh, it takes a special kind of yeah. person? It doesn't mean that video games themselves are inherently uh, uh, addictive. Not. It's that there are certain, and just like everything, right? Like like we we know what the addiction rates for various things are. Mm -hmm. um, there's really great, uh, uh, like even, even substances that we know have like. Chemical addiction properties, things like cigarettes, like cigarettes have an addiction rate of about 30%. Mm -hmm. So 30% of people who, who try cigarettes become what they would classify as being addicted. Right. And something like 15% of people who, who drink alcohol become mm -hmm. quote-unquote addicted. And then uh, marijuana is like somewhere like in the neighborhood of like 6% or something like that. Right. You know, um, in, in those cases, I mean, those are things that we know that like are, are chemicals that we ingest that have direct – effects on our brain chemistry. Right. Uh, and we talked about this uh, in our episode where we talked about, uh, fun funnily enough, loot boxes. Yeah. Uh, the, the gambling machine of the world. Yeah. Uh, well, that is loot boxes specifically. Yeah. Um, the loot boxes, uh, uh, they, they do that thing where like they, they, they give you the same sorts of positive yeah. feelings that they trigger the pleasure sensors in your brain right and, and and encourage the release of dopamine which we know makes you feel good and and your your body wants to feel that dopamine rush again that kind of like a uh, uh, relationship that people have with the dopamine release uh, release uh, they they chase that in other things too you know there are people that have um issues with compulsive eating and it's the same sort of thing right, right. where they're they're sort of self-medicating because of, uh, they, they have depression or yeah. anxiety. Or like something. other things are going on in their life. Either. And they, yeah, they want to. They're seeking a release from that, and the the dopamine hit when they get, for example, when they eat one of their favorite foods, and those foods may be engineered to trigger that thing too, right? Mm -hmm. the, one of the things that they talk about uh, at the, uh, the 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 Dorito Corporation, 
I don't know if that's actually a thing. I don't know if it actually makes Doritos. <laughs> Frito Lay. Frito Lay. The good people of Frito Lay like to talk about something they call the the, the bliss point, right? It was, it's the right combination of texture, fat, salt, and and sugar together that maximizes that dopamine release. So like companies know what they're doing on that end in the same way that video game companies do, right? They know that if they can trigger those dopamine releases and we know that um, and again I would strongly encourage you to watch Danny O'Dwyer's phenomenal episode of The Point back when, when, when he was with GameSpot mm-hmm. which was called uh, Destiny the Hardcore Gamers Slot Machine yeah. so fucking good where he talks about basically they hired clinical psychologists uh, whose jobs it was to create systems that they knew would be rewarding in that way right And they're the same kinds of people that did this same kind of psychological research for the casino industry, for the gaming industry, right? They knew things like certain patterns of colors and lights and sounds uh, when they're triggered with combined with certain events. You know, even though you're not getting a dollar reward like a slot machine would, you're still getting something. Your brain still goes, ooh, me likey. I mean, it's the same reason why McDonald's is the color, the, the restaurant McDonald's is the color it is. Yeah. And the, so that it attracts you in. And the colors inside McDonald's are a certain color so that it, it triggers in your brain, I need to leave. Yeah. There's, uh, there's, there's a, there's a very, very, uh, in depth, uh, research and analysis group that, like, really, maximizes these things as much as possible. But that means that the people who are on the fringes, the people who are already vulnerable Mm -hmm. are the ones who are going to get, who are going to develop problems. Of course. Yeah. Right. And where that becomes an issue is when it reaches the, the teetering point where it's like the majority of people now exhibit some kind of like, uh, 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 addiction quality Mm -hmm. to their lives in those kind of situations. That's when it becomes an issue. We're like, well, wait a minute. Maybe the thing itself, maybe the thing is too addictive. Maybe we need to pull this back a little bit. Right. Uh, I don't know if we're there with video games or not. I don't, I don't think we are. I anymore. don't think so either. I think that threshold was very clearly things like things like cigarettes and stuff mm-hmm. like that, where we know like 30%, that's pretty huge. But the other thing with that is that we know that c- cigarettes directly kill people. Right. At least if people are playing video games, um, <laughs> the, the, the video the, games themselves aren't going to yeah. kill them in the in the short term. Yeah. Um, it may lead to things like poor health because you're not physically active. Right. Um, and then there are the really tragic cases where you hear stories about people who are who are so pulled in that they either when they're when they're pulled away from their games they use violence mm-hmm. um, as as a means to sort of like reconcile that. Like we've we've heard all kinds of bizarre stories about people in gaming cafes who have. Uh, you know, who, who have lost their opportunity to play the game they love for whatever reason yeah. and then acted in a really extreme and, and disproportionately violent manner. Uh, or people, there's... Uh, there are a couple of times, a couple of stories of uh, people just playing for so long they just end up having a heart attack and die. Uh, or people who play so long that they ignore the uh, the, the immediate needs of uh, someone that's in their care, whether right. it be... An, uh, I, I, I know that there's a factual story out there as someone who is playing a video game to the point where they ignore their child to the point that the yeah. child... But or, or their it, pet or any, anyone else. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, that's horrific. Yeah, uh, for sure. So the, the question for me then is, is it really necessary to draw a distinction between video games, compulsive video game playing and compulsive gambling? Um, because the reality is gam- gambling are games as well. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. no doubt about it. You go to a slot machine and it basically is a video game except you just pull a lever. Yeah. Well, yeah. not actually a video game, but you know what I mean. It, it is an it's inter- a game. It is it's an a- interactive experience. It's entertainment. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's, when it's, my it's, grandmother tells me about when she goes to the casino every week again, yeah. it's literally she's going there to play games yeah. that she pays for. Yeah. We, we, we know they're games because they're interactive experiences. Yeah. Um, they have game mechanics. Um, just like any other game, they have rewards. All games have rewards of some kind, right? Um, it's just in the case of gambling, the reward is, is money, right? Right. It has a direct monetary value. It has, it doesn't, it, it has intrinsic value, right? You, you go, you play slot machine. And if you win, you walk out with more money. Right. And we know that that as an added layer is a huge dissuading factor. Um, but on top of that, uh, uh, you have the game mechanics themselves that are designed to draw you in. And those are the same mechanics that are applied in video games. But in this case, 
there's no payout, right? Mm-hmm. You just get the, the the sweet pants for your 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 level forty wizard or whatever, yeah. right? Hey You're, man, they're 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 orange, so they're legendary. Yeah, that's how you know they're important. You get that dope staff for your monk. That's that's your reward. But it's still hitting the same points in your brain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the difference being that like the lows that you can hit with gambling uh, are more in the short term, uh, uh, more faster and have more obvious repercussions. Right? right. If you go and blow your whole fucking paycheck yeah. on the slot machines in one night uh, and you can't pay the bills, like the immediate repercussions of those are pretty severe. Right. right? But if you uh, if you play video games and don't shower for three weeks, the immediate repercussions of those, right? It, it takes a period of time before it becomes noticeable. Right. And if you have the kind of job where you don't have to leave the house, right? Yeah. Um, then it just gets so much worse. Yeah. The, well, the, those kinds of so, social repercussions don't become evident. Right. Right. Uh, uh, blowing the, the example of blowing the paycheck, it, it becomes evident immediately. Right. The, the the result is within the next couple of days. Whereas if you're in this cycle of never leaving and losing friends and stuff like that, we know socialization is important to humans. Yeah. As much as you say, I don't need friends. I'm sorry. You need friends. Hum- human beings live on socialization. True. I don't need friends. Uh, you don't have to have – it's not a competition. I don't know how many friends you have, yeah. but you do have to socialize at yeah. some level. Everyone socializes differently and everyone – like some people will just want like a close in- intimate group of friends and some yeah. people just want a whole bunch of friends. Right. Either way, the main thing is you talk to other people You sometimes. get some form of socialization. Yeah. Uh, we also know that doing things like walking and exposing yourself to the sunlight yeah. is is – Pretty vital at a certain stage. Just, just leading a balanced life in general, yeah. not not just video games. Yeah, that that's not your whole life. Yeah, you gotta be able to do other things. But the reality is that those things, the repercussions for those things, take time. Yeah, sometimes to resolve, they don't happen right away. So it's it's a little bit harder to put sort of your finger on what the issue is, right. which is probably one of the reasons why. And that combined with the fact that video games aren't necessarily video games have grown in popularity, mm-hmm. right? I mean, video games didn't exist until the 1970s, right? right? Uh, so now we're at a point where basically every generation, with maybe the exception of the oldest generation, doesn't play video games. Right. So now it can be more prevalent, mm-hmm. right? whereas before it just it wasn't. So in my mind, uh, uh, I don't I don't see the, the, the AMA doing this. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see the uh, – um, or the APA, excuse me, the American Psychi- uh, Psychiatric uh, Association. I don't see them adopting this. I can see them rolling it into gaming addiction in general, like which mm-hmm. is which is a, a classification of gambling addiction. Um, but I mean, they're they're a notoriously kind of a stingy bunch in terms of like how they add things, how they formalize uh, mental uh, health disorders. They're they're right. very very they're very cautious about how they do that stuff. The WHO seems to have kind of gone. Uh, out on a limb a little bit with this one, yeah. um, especially because I don't even—I still don't think we we know everything about this, how it even happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the the reality is we can say, look, there's just there's compulsive behavior. Do we ha- need to say that each form of compulsive behavior is its own uh, uh, own disease? Right, right. Like if I compulsively, uh, you know, you uh, compulsively I, read, if you I read compulsively t- gamble. <laughs> Yeah, or if I go, if, if I do anything to the yeah. point of social exclusion, um, you know, because that can happen with any media, and, uh, media form. Yeah, it's not just video games that it's like. Yeah. Right. So then, so then the answer is well, it's about it's about people who who have compulsive behaviors in general. Right. That doesn't mean that they have obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a different thing. Yeah. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a very very different <laughs> thing that we're talking about here. But people who feel a compulsion to do one particular thing at the exclusion of other things. Um, and, and it'll be, so it'll be interesting to see how the APA reacts to this because again, in 2013, they said, no, thank you. We don't want to include this in the, yep. the, the DSM five. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I, I think again, uh, from the point of view of laymen, uh, and just people who understand video games, the, uh, the answer is clearly, yes, there are people who are obsessed with video games. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and certainly have hurt themselves and people around them because of video games, uh, or or because of their 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 use of video games. But right. does that mean that it was? Should we classify it exclusively as video game addiction? Or, I mean, I can certainly say there. Yeah. I I, ha- I have known some friends who have been addicted to video games 
But again, my question is ultimately, and maybe this is again because I'm not a psychiatric specialist, right? Well, neither of us are. No, unfortunately. Uh, and was it because they're the kind of were they just a person who would get obsessed with any one thing, or are they, or was it was was gaming specifically the thing that they needed? Right. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm again, I'm not yeah. an expert in this, and clearly the experts are divided. Because, uh, again, the WHO has said one thing, but the APA has said another. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this evolves right. uh, and how people uh, uh, react to it and what kind of changes uh, sociologically happen as a result of it. That I can confidently say this. Yeah. Um, if you are if, – if, if, you, if you feel – if you're feeling low uh, on a regular basis and you notice that it's having an effect on your life – or if you're feeling anxious on a regular basis and you're knowing it's ha having an effect on your life, or if you recognize that the only way that you can feel good is by playing video games. That being said, uh, uh, if you play video games and because you're playing video games, you missed out on major life events, uh, I would urge you to to just go seek a, a psychological expert and see mm -hmm. uh, if uh, maybe you just sit down and have a conversation with someone and say, like, hey, this, yeah. is, this is what happened. This is how I feel, um, you know, especially – uh, I don't know about you, Ryan, but I know like I've I've been pretty open with my challenges with like mental health, with both mm -hmm. depression and anxiety. Um, I know that I've uh, had conversations with some friends of the show about that, uh, and I know that I certainly have used video games as a way to escape from those problems. Right. Uh, I've been fortunate enough that I haven't got to a point where like video games have like destroyed an entire aspect of my life. Right. Um, but uh, if you're if if that has happened to you there there's help there's yeah. lots of places there there are clinical psychiatrists and psychologists there's medication and there's counseling there's group counseling there's lots of options out there and if you're the kind of person like well, i can't afford a psychiatrist i can't afford a psychologist i mean there are lots of free options there are lots of people who just want to talk yeah and there there are tons of people out there who care about you uh there's a, a great website called seven cups of tea which is just like you just chat with random strangers and they just say like, hey, man, how you doing? And you can just tell them, hey, I'm feeling bummed out. And they just say yeah. – and they, they're just there. They're just someone f f uh, for you to, to talk with. There are church groups and there are uh, uh, you know, uh, gambling addiction and gaming addiction uh, uh, support groups in um, community centers and, and, uh, and municipal organizations that are there to help you as well. So – you know, you you are not alone if you are yeah. suffering from, and you're um, not the first person this has ever happened to or anything. And the main thing is not, not to keep it yourself. Yeah, like the main thing is to talk about it. And yeah, the the, that's one, the only way to get better. The the one thing that kills um, uh, uh, mental health problems, the one thing that sort of destroys the the demon that is a mental health challenge, is talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you this definitively: being open and discussing it with people, uh, and 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 pushing that stigma away. Um, that will let you tackle it a lot more if you mm -hmm. if you're going through those cycles of like guilt and shame. Uh, that is an expression of uh, of the, the the mental health challenges themselves, and uh, that's that kind of stuff will go away once you start talking about it. Yeah. You, you will find that the vast majority of people you talk to are sympathetic and are open to talking to you about your men mental health challenges, right. uh, and uh, the most people who would say to you that, oh, no, like you're you're not cool because you're depressed or like your anxiety makes you a loser, honestly, <laughs> yeah. those people are like hugely in the minority and typically would not express themselves publicly because they know that they're yeah. – they're, they're, they'd, they'd get booted. They'd yeah, get that, shamed. That, that, is, that is a poisonous way of, of thinking and expressing yeah. yourself. So, yeah. Um, it's kind of weird, man. It's, we're living in strange times. Yeah, I know. Yeah. With crossplay and yeah. this and all, all these uh, news stories we've been seeing of, oh, my God, you play 20 hours of Fortnite a week? Yeah. You've got a disorder. Yes. That's what that's what I've been seeing on local news stations. And it's been yeah. I mean, I've been shaking my head of some of the some of the stuff that we've seen. Yeah. Like, I mean, this week, I, there was a time certainly where I was playing a ton of Destiny. I love playing Destiny. But one of the byproducts of that was I was staying in touch with friends that I've had yeah. for 25 years. Yeah. Right. Like I have like my friends all live. They live on the East Coast. They live in, on, you know, on the Gulf of Mexico. They live in the United States. They live in Canada. They live all over the place. They live in BC. They live in Ontario. So, you know, so it was a way for all of us to be together and talking again in, in a shared way when we couldn't be in the same physical space. Yeah, and that was certainly important to me. So yeah. I was there was a time where I was spending a lot of time doing. Well, that, I was so. the same way with World of Warcraft. Like I talked about, it's like when, yeah. I, when I would talk to 
Like that was the way the way I kept in touch with people. Yeah, the best. Anyway, so that was before too. There was a lot of stuff like Discord and a lot easier ways of doing that because mm. we were using like Ventrilo to talk to people. We were using bench. push push to talk. Yeah, back in back in the good old days. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Cool. So let's move on, Drew. Yes. You played a game this week. I did. Hitman. I did. Hitman. Tell me about Hitman. The, the, the Hitman collection. The Hitman. Yeah. I think it's just the Hitman. The Hitman collection? What, yeah. what, what, what are they called? Anyway, Hitman Definitive Edition. That's Hit, what it is. Hitman Definitive Edition. Not, Hit, not Hitman Remastered Edition, if only. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. It does not feature Mars. Um, if only. At least not that I'm aware of. Uh, yeah, I've played the first three four missions the the two tutorial missions and the uh the the paris mission and i just started on the budapest one nice. so th- those are all like kind of early on ones um god there's a lot of fucking game here yeah uh if you like hitman um th- like this is it like i can see like this this is the definitive hitman experience uh just the way that they do things it's so clever uh the the level design is really great the um the whole like crowd dynamic stuff and then the, the, the environmental storytelling, the narrative, like basically, you know, you disguise yourself as a waiter and you walk into a room and you overhear two people like talking about like so-and-so's favorite cocktail. And then that gives you a lead on, Oh, I can make that cocktail and poison it. And then like, I can make the poison, make them want to throw up. And then when they go to the bathroom, I can sneak into the bathroom and I can murder them and then I can leave and then everything's cool. Uh, yeah, there, there's all, I, incidentally, everyone I've killed so far, uh, the vast majority of them has, has been I poisoned them and then drowned them in the bathroom. Yeah, that, so if someone is found dead like that, that's Drew's moniker. That's that, how you know it was that, him. That is my. That's uh, how we know you were the murderer. That's my calling card. Yeah. If someone was drowned in a toilet while they were throwing up. After was, they were That poisoned. was me. Yeah. There are there are three different types of poisons in uh, uh, Hitman. There's uh, a medic poison, which is uh, a poison that will make someone like throw up mm-hmm. uh there's a poison i can't remember what there's there's one that i can't remember what it is i think it just stuns them or something like just basically makes them pass out oh or like paralyzes them or something something like that and then there's one that like out out, out kills them i've right. only ever found the first one okay. uh so far um uh, yeah because i know there later on there's one where uh, it's um the the poison from um uh the the a uh, puffer fish. Okay. Uh, fugu, right? The famous really Japanese ah, dish. Ah, yes. If you prepare it incorrectly. From that very Simps- famous Simpson episode. Yeah, if you prepare it incorrectly, it will it can kill you because of the if you don't cut around the poison gland appropriately. Right. So you can intentionally prepare sushi that uh, uh, has fugu poison laced in it so that the person will die. Um, that's in a later mission, though. Right. Um, and then just, like, the environments are beautiful. Um the way the story is sort of uh, emerging is kind of neat. I don't really have a great sense on what the narrative is other than just like, there's a conspiracy of some guy. Yeah. Uh, well, it sounds kind of like just every Hitman game. To be, honest. I, to be fair, there was one Hitman game that was there. That was real weird. Um, it was the one, I believe it was the one before this. Uh, uh, Absolution. I think or... it was, uh, it was the one where, uh, it, 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 it opens with basically 47 coming back to life. Yeah. It's really dumb. It was a really dumb game. It was a really ugly game. Yeah. It was like there was one where like you're behind the scenes at like a like a like a wrestling match and like I'm pretty sure that's a that's yeah definition. yeah because I remember us talking about that a long. There was time a lot ago. of like strip club stuff because that was the one everyone liked. But you and you were like, there's no way it's bueno. now. You couldn't understand it. I mean, the game, like the gameplay stuff, was good, but like, it, it, like they went for this whole like really like oh, okay. dirty, gritty narrative. Like it was for the first time it was set in America, and like there was like you know like the weird old like pervy guy who wanted to have sex with children or something. Great. It was like yeah, this old like Texas oil tycoon. That's what and, you want in your game. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair and he, like he kept alluding to like wanting to have sex with children or something like that. It's just, just, again, it just seemed like a really ugly game. It was one of those things where, like, it reminded me of Kane and Lynch, I think. It just, in, uh, that's a real dirty game. Yeah, in, in, in the, the flavor and sort of the, like, the taste of it. Just looking at the Kane and Lynch box art just makes me feel dirty. Inside. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I'm, I love Hitman. I've been a fan of Hitman for a long time. Hitman 2 was probably one of my favorite games. The whole okay. idea that you could do it whatever way you wanted, like, mm-hmm. you could go in and, uh, you could just go into gun, Guns of Blazing and just mm-hmm. shoot shoot up the place, or you could go the silent assassin route, and that was killing the person, but it looking definitively like it was an accident. Right. Um, 
That's the way the Dark Brotherhood does it. Drew. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, like like in one of them, it was like you rigged up the propane tank at a children's barbecue so that like it essentially exploded when the guy tried to light the barbecue. Right. And you dressed up as a clown famously. Uh, or you could snipe him from like a child's um, uh, 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 like uh, treehouse. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there. So just like that, there are a bunch of options here, but like. The maps are so much bigger and so much more sprawling. There's so many more people and there's so many things to learn. Mm -hmm. And it strongly encourages you to go the Asylum Assassin route. Basically, right. you, you get points and you get ranks for the fewer non-targets you kill. So, like, if you kill only the targets, good on you. Mm -hmm. uh, if your kill is undetected, even more points, you know, like, yeah. uh, and so on and so on and so on. And, and if it looks like an accident, then e even better. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, one of them is, like, there's, like, a runway. And there's a, a fashion show and one of the characters will walk down the runway and you can rig up the lighting uh, rig so that oh, it will okay. follow them, collapse yeah. them, and kill them. And then no one will even suspect that it was murder. So, yeah, uh, it, it it's a fuck. This game is so good. I can see why people gave it game of the year. Yeah. Uh, and if you hadn't played it before uh, or, or at least you played like. X number of chapters of it really loved it. This is the time to get it now because, yeah. like, especially because Hitman Two is coming later this year, yeah, in November. Yeah, and there's so much content in this game. Yeah, like I'm gonna be playing this for months. Well, yeah, it's like four or five, like it's five episodes worth of content, right? So. It's a lot. I can't remember how many. But the other, the great thing about it too is that uh, there are challenge modes afterwards and stuff. Like you only get one save. Mm -hmm. uh, like more items are are restricted. So like if you get pat da patted down certain things, having certain things in your inventory will. Uh, we'll trade so be like, oh, there's a gun in there. Yeah. Well, gun will always get you caught. Well, but okay. like things like your. It was uh, an example. The fiber wire in one version doesn't, in the other it does, okay. and so on. Um, you know, like, and and just sort of escalating things from there. Uh, and then there are also other challenge modes where, like, they add extra targets. There was a thing called, like, targets of opportunity or something like that, where, like, you had, like, a specific window where you yeah. had to do the. Isn't that where, wait, where the Gary Busey one was? The Gary Busey was, thing was one of those, yeah. yeah. And then there's ones where, and, like, the whole level changes, right? Like, there's, like, time of day changes, okay. positions of people change, yeah, and stuff like that. So I haven't done any of that stuff yet because I'm just doing the normal yeah. missions right now in it. Uh, so it'll be really exciting to see what it is. The only thing that I hate is that it's it's got a, an online component. So, like, every time I go to uh, resume gameplay. So, like, I put down the controller and just, you know, put my Xbox to sleep when I left the house uh, to yeah. come to the studio today. And when I go back, I'm going to have to sit there and wait for, like, a, two minutes. You're going to have like, to log into your WB account. Or just, like, it just says, you know, connecting to Hitman servers. And I just kind of have to sit there and sink my, sip my soda pops while I wait for that to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. What do you even play, Ryan? Ah, uh, well... I'm glad you asked, Drew. So first of all, I'm going to go into the less interesting stuff first, and then I'll talk about Octopath Traveler, because I want to talk a lot about Octopath Traveler, since okay. Brock's not here to, to shush me. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what I'm about to tell you, though, Drew, is a, is a big spoiler, because basically on uh, Sunday, a video yeah. is going live showing my unboxing of this month's Video Games Monthly, which Ooh. is a subscription service where you say, hey, by the way, here are the ga game consoles I'm collecting for. Here are the games I already own, and they send you games you don't own. Cool. That they think you'll be interested well, in. Because they really look at like the genres and stuff that you have. And they're like, hey, these are the types of games you like. So we'll send you games that you probably will like. Cool. So Ryan, um, what's our official relationship with this organization? They they, they exist and we exist separately? Yeah. So they're, they're not we don't, we're not we're sponsored, not sponsored by them in any way. Yeah. Yet. I mean, it, we're, we're open to having that conversation. It sounds like just a great service. got to pick up the phone, guys. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, we're, we're... No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, we're not sponsored or anything like that. This, this was uh, very much just a trial run even. I'm not even sure I'm going to continue with the service. Cool. But from what I got saw so far, I'm actually kind of impressed. So awesome. uh, some of the games I got to play, and again, I've never owned any of these games. In fact, I think only uh, other than uh, there's only one I've ever played because I own it on PS4. So one of them uh, was Resident Evil on GameCube. Mm. Uh, which, I, again, I never owned the GameCube version. I had the PS4 version now okay. of Resident Evil Remake, but never owned the original version of it. Yeah. So to have that, so I'll, I won't talk about it too much, obviously. No, everyone knows it's great. It's you fucking, can go play it right now. It's fucking Resident Evil, dude. Uh, the next game I got was Super Mario Advanced, the Game Boy Advance, Drew, which is a remake, and this is, this is going to blow your mind, okay? It's a remake of Super Mario Brothers 2. Like I remember Super this. Mario Brothers USA, as well as Mario Brothers, the arcade game. Yeah. But the way they remade Super Mario Brothers 2, they remade it so that there are like giant sprites in it. So like some of the shy guys are like huge and you ha you have to use like special weapons to kill them. Likewise, you can pick up like giant like beats and stuff 
who are throwing them at people. It's re- it's a really weird game. Huh. It's really weird, but it's it's surprisingly fun and it looked great. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three on the Game Boy Color. I've only ever had game like traditional Game Boy games. I've never owned a Game Boy Color game. It's my very first Game Boy Color game. Oh my god, this game is so bad, Drew. <laughs> Ryan, do you have a Game Boy Color? I do not have a Game Boy Color, but I have a uh, Super Game Boy. No, I have I have a Retron Five, which plays Game Boy uh, game, uh, well, game Boy Color games. GBC game. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I kind I used to have the Super Game Boy back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But I thought I remember seeing it somewhere on a shelf at your place, but no, I wish I still had it. Yeah. But it, I, it I was the play to the the way to play uh, Metroid Two. Yeah. Uh, same as true. Or likewise, uh, getting the Game Boy player for your GameCube yeah. was also a great way to play Game Boy games as well, yeah. um, which I used to have as well for my old GameCube. But, cool. Yeah. Uh, so Tony Hawk Pro, Pro Skater, Skater 3, 3 for, for the, the Game, Game Boy, Boy Color. Color. Yeah. Not a good game. No, it's a, two, it's a 2D like pixelized Tony Hawk game where you basically like you just go side to side. And huh. You do tricks and everything's done on one button and it's really weird. So it's like California games? Kind of like that, except worse. Remember California games? I remember California it's games. A good game. Well. I used to play it on Sega Channel all the time. You play that. You play the hacky sack game, and then like you could like yeah. hit hit the seagull with the hacky sack, and you got the bad. Just imagine, there. basically, as if you will, if Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was on the NES. Mm. That's what this game would be, except somehow worse than that. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so I, I played that, and also uh, Fatal Fury Two was the last game in my box this week, oh. uh, and I didn't know what Fatal Fury Two was going into it. So on the video, I was a dumbass and thought it was a brawler when, in fact, it's a fighting game. So Fatal Fury 2 is actually an SNK fighting game. That's where all, like, their 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 main fighting franchise, kind of like how Street Fighter is Capcom's, essentially. Mm-hmm. And it's still a really fun game. It still holds up really well. Um, and I'd never played it before, ever. Like, I d- never, ever have paid attention to SNK fighting games. Like, when they had that SNK Capcom crossover game, I'm like, who the fuck are all these characters? Uh but yeah, it was really cool. So those are the five games in my box. Yeah. And all of them were really fun, other than Tony Hawk. But it's it's cool because they're all games that I would never have normally picked up myself. Um, and it, me being such a big retro game fan, it's really cool to try out a lot of games I'd never played before. That's awesome, like, though. Like Tony Hawk 3. Or or even like Super Mario Advance, even. It's cool to play Super Mario those two in a different way. The Super Mario Advance sounds really neat, actually. I don't remember that. I like I vaguely remember it, but not super well. Then I'm going to yeah. fucking Google Cause it. Because, again, like the art, art style, too, looks kind of looks like um, uh, the Super Mario Brothers All-Stars version uh, of Mario 2. Yeah, I, I kind of vaguely remember that. Yeah. Um, and But it, what's really annoying, though, is all the characters have voices, and they're all terrible voices, including Birdo, who is like, oh, no, you'll never stop me. That's what Birdo sounds like in that game. It's really dumb. Hmm. Uh, so the other thing I played, though, the, the really exciting thing that you, dear listener at home, if you own a Nintendo Switch and have an internet connection, you can play this yourself as well. The Octopath Traveler demo is out right now. The, the, there's a new demo. There was an old uh, like sort of trial that was basically just the beginning of the dancer's story, and I don't remember her name off the top of my head. Um, but this new demo is basically called the Prologue Demo. When the prologue demo isn't like a separate vertical slice of the game, like uh, like the first one was, mm-hmm. this is just the full game. Uh, you basically have a three-hour time limit on it, and they're like, go. Hmm. So basically, what you do when you start uh, Octopath Traveler is you, uh, as the trailer s- sort of suggests, you pick one of eight characters to start with, and they all have a unique backstory to them. Um, almost, It starts almost like uh, Secret of Mana 3 does where you basically choose a story, and depending on who you start with, the, st- the main quest for the game, as well as sort of the beginning of the game, is very different for each person, which is kind of cool. Um, so I pl- picked the Huntress. She was my character. She can use bows and uh, arrows as well as axes. She can also uh, catch monsters and sort of summon them, which is really cool. So she's got a lot of unique tools. Um, but what I really love about Octopath Traveler is the combat system. Uh, if you at all have played Bravely Default, on uh, the 3DS, the the you can definitely tell it's from the same developer because the combat system is very risk reward similar to that game. So basically, the combat is turn based combat RPG combat similar to an old school Final Fantasy game, but basically uh, there's a uh, break and boost system. So basically, each enemy you run into has different weaknesses that things that they're weak to, and if you use their weakness against them. They, they have a certain number of charges before you'll basically stun them and get an extra turn. And every single turn, you're earning these boost points, 
just by doing whatever whatever action you do per turn. You get one per turn essentially. And basically when you build up four of them, you can then use them to boost any one of your abilities, whether it be magic attacks, summons, or just your basic attacks even. Um, and that's and so w- basically what you want to try and do is you want to try and stun the enemies because they become more weak to their weaknesses and then use all your boosts on the enemies as they're weak, which is really in- which leads to some really interesting boss battles. Um, like some of the normal enemies you can you can probably uh, blow through pretty quickly if you know their weaknesses because they it, it logs that information so you don't have to remember it every time. Thank God. I love it when RPGs yeah. do that. It just has little signals. So once you actually like, first of all, it tells you how many weaknesses they have. Yeah. And then it, once you've exploited a weakness, it, it's permanently etched. That's like what Persona does that. Yeah, right? like, exactly. Yeah. Once you figure out to use or not use Bufu. Yeah. It reminds you. It reminds yeah. you. It makes sure you know to use Bufu every time. Yeah. So it works the same way with this. Um, or like Pokemon, it's super effective. Yeah. You know. Uh, but sometimes like their weakness is a, a, an attack with a staff. Which you wouldn't, which normally in a traditional JRPG, you'd be like, why would I ever attack with my characters with Sav? Yeah. And the answer is, well, sometimes you might have to because it might be their only weakness. Yeah. When, when you've got the quote unquote, the healer character that only uses Savs, and then, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So I really love, I love the combat in the game. The, the game is absolutely gorgeous. It's mm-hmm. basically this 8 bit, uh, sorry, 16 bit pixel art with, for all the characters, like the NPCs and your main characters. But then it's got these really like cool, like almost like, uh, like, um, wooden backgrounds like basically like if you built a stage out of like wood like a little toy stage or whatever cool. like it looks really really sharp on the, the switch screen and very impressive so I have, to, I have to say it's probably the like my hype level went from like medium size hype to like through the roof for this game cool. I am as a RPG fan it's one I've waited for a while like it's what I wanted Lost Fear to be yeah and and why I was disappointed with that game and now this game looks incredible. I yeah. can't wait for it. The only thing I'm conver- concerned about before going into it because it comes out later this month is how the stories are going to intersect because you didn't really get to s- experience how that really works in the demo. Like you can basically go and recruit as many of them as you want in the three like other party members in the three hour time span. But I don't know how the main story, story after that comes together. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm concerned about. Also, the writing is not great. Like just like regularly default the way they tell some of the stories. Mm-hmm. It's a little weird. Like some of the the way they use language and stuff that they like to use like some weird like Shakespearean English when it's like really annoying and stupid to read, I mm-hmm. guess. So that's my only concern. But otherwise, the game plays great. looks great. I cool. can't wait. All right. So, Drew, let's talk about the few news stories we have before we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly just release dates or announcements of things. But again, it's post E3, so we don't have a ton of news right now. Uh, this first one, though, I can't believe they didn't announce this during E3 at all. I'm I'm just very puzzled and perplexed by this so life is strange 2 was officially revealed and got a release date yeah so episode one of five because it's gonna be five episodes again will debut on september 27th uh no details were shared as to what the game actually is or who you play as or what you do uh but there will be a reveal sometime in august for it they said there'd be another trailer it's it's so weird we got the weird side story but we didn't get this yeah, like they, they announced the side story at the Xbox press conference, and then they didn't announce this. But then the side story thing is coming out this week. It's mm-hmm. free for everyone and somehow ties into this. Yeah. So I wonder if we're going to see who the protagonist is for Life is Strange 2 or not, or how, or what type of powers we're going to work with. Who knows? Who knows? We'll get, we'll have the, I'll have the answer for you next week on, on, on next week's show. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, of course, big Life is Strange fan. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Next up, Dragon Ball Fighters on Switch has a release date. It's coming on September 28th, so later the next day. Uh, pre-orders uh, for the game are up now, but if you pre-ordered the game, what's cool is they're actually including an unreleased North American SNES game with the pre-order. You That's get neat. Dragon Ball Z Super Booten, which was like their 2, 2D uh, fighting game, basically. Like kind it, was, of it was their Street Fighter 2 of... It was essentially the inspiration for Dragon Ball Fighters, Yeah, which is really cool. And, and not, none of the... Because there were three of those games in that series on the SNES yeah. that just never came out in North America. I have played them many times, emulated their, their yeah. cool games. Yeah. This is really neat. Yeah, the later ones are much better than the first one, but it's cool just to even see them doing that, yeah. especially because there's no virtual console. So, like, how else would they ever re-release this? Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, so it's cool. Uh, next up, Arc System Works and A-Plus Games have announced that they're developing a Kill a Kill game. Kill a Kill is an anime, 
You're giving me that weird look like you have no idea what I'm talking I, I about. I mean, I, I've heard the name before. I, I'm assuming it involves scantily clad women, something, something, something. Also big swords. Yeah, big swords and half-naked women. Yeah. Uh, all and we know so burn. far is it's a quote-unquote battle action title. Also, there's lots of naked men in that, too, in that anime, too. Big old dongs. Big yeah. old dongs and boobies and swords. They're, they're, it's a two-player th- third-person fighting game from the looks of it like that. Cool. But I'm a little bit worried about it because A-Plus Studios is, are the developers of the Little Witch Academia game, which wasn't very good. So I'm interested to see what they do with this. Step, step up your fucking game, A-plus games. I mean, I hope it is good because I love Kill a Kill. It's one of my favorite anime. So mm. I'm excited for this. And last last but not least, Valkyria Chronicles uh, 4, a game close to my heart because I love that series, uh, finally has a North American release date. It came out in March in Japan, but it's coming out on September 25th on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. So if you like strategy RPGs and third-person shooters mixed together, go play Valkyria Chronicles 4. Do so I? It's going to be fun. So let's talk, jump into new releases before we go. There's a lot of them, Drew. Mm-hmm. Luminez Remastered out this week. Yeah, that weird. Oh my god, game. I love Luminez. I'm excited for this. It's like, a, like a puzzle it. kind of game in the vague sort of vein of Metroid or whatever. In a lot of ways. No, Metroid, excuse me, Tetris. Yeah, oh, Lord. it's basically a, a Tetris like. It's basically what you would do if you cross Tetris with music. Yeah. Because it basically is very much rhythm based. It's got like a rhythm bar, and depending mm-hmm. on how the pace of the song is how fast the blocks disappear and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, as I mentioned before, the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit, the prologue to Life is Strange 2, out this week, free for everyone. And they clarified everyone. Is it a prologue or is it a side story? Who knows? Yeah. We'll find out on Tuesday. Somehow vaguely related to yeah. Life is Strange. There, there's something they're not telling us. Tangentially, there, there might, there's likely a method to the madness here in terms of yeah. what they're announcing and why they're... I'm sure we'll find out if it's a prequel or a side story when we play. Uh, we, I'm pretty sure it's probably a prequel. Yeah, it's going to be you're playing as but, someone who's like... Who like grows up and becomes... Yeah, the not protagonist. necessarily an adult, but a teenager perhaps. Yeah. Next one. yeah. Well, it's all about teenage drama, Drew. Yes. That's what Life is Strange Well, we, is we don't know what the sequel's going to be. It could be anything. But I want to do another sequence where I have to make up lines during a play again. That was really fun. Cool. Uh, next up, uh, Near Automata comes to Xbox One. Uh, go play it. It's a fantastic game. It's cheaper than the normal version and comes with all the DLC. So go get that. Cool. Uh, Rainbow Skies out this week. It's a sequel to Rainbow Moon, which was a, uh, strategy RPG that was pretty good. It was on Vita before and it is on PS4 now. Uh, The Crew 2, uh, this week from our friends at Ubisoft. I played the, de- the, the beta for The Crew 2, uh, and really liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I know Sean Capri played it on stream uh, not too long ago as well. In fact, that's up on the Wii Gamer GamerCast YouTube, uh, so you can go check that out as well if you're interested. Uh, and then we got a whole bunch of Switch games, Drew. Inside comes to Switch. Limbo comes to Switch. Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus comes to Switch. Yeah. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy comes to Switch. Yeast 8, Lacrimosa of Donna comes to Switch. And finally, the Blob Remastered comes to Switch. Oh, the Blob. That's a lot of Switch games in one week, and they're all pretty pretty good titles. Especially Crash Bandicoot. I hear he's going. Oh, we can skip Crash Bandicoot. It's a good game. It's a good game. You don't hear tell you. You got you. Got, I mean, you hang out with someone who likes Cool Spot. Cool Spot's not a bad game. It's, it's really Crash Bandicoot's a bad game. Spyro is a bad game. Cool Spot's neat. I don't think we can be friends anymore, Drew. <laughs> also, Seven uh, Up is delicious. Well, Seven Up is delicious, and Cool Spot was a cool mascot. But cool Spot, the game is really bad. It's got some solid animation. I know what you're talking about. That doesn't make the game fun. Uh, you, <laughs> That's like your whole argument with Altered Beast. Your your Spot, <laughs> no, no. My whole argument with Altered Beast is, um, you want to turn into a bear? You cool t- t- turn into cool animals and you fight dudes. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent beat em up. Decent beat em up. Oh Jesus! Yeah. All right. So before we go, your plugs go. Uh, I'm at D. McMill on Twitter, and you can find me on Pornhub, kissing Brock McLaughlin. Way to step up for for Brock this yeah, week. Yeah, I'm I'm representing for for Brock Daddy because he can't be here. So you know, I have to say something inappropriate. <laughs> what well, someone had to, I guess. Uh, yeah. and it, it's better than you and me. There were me. Oh, I penises, guess. penises, penises. I forgot to talk about dicks during this podcast. It's true. Yeah. You did forget to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, you also didn't flip upside down in your chair this week either. Yeah, that's, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. That's T-U-R-F-O-R-D. You can find our website, game-moose.com, for all your game-moose needs, including this podcast and videos and other stuff. Again, if you want to see me pull some stuff out, if you want to see me play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 on Game Boy Color, that's going to be on my 
my uh, unboxing video. So go look that look at that at game moosecom slash video. Oh, yeah. You can also find us on Twitter at game underscore moose underscore cast on Facebook at facebook.com slash game moose podcast. You can find us every single week at Monday noon Eastern Standard Time on podcast services around the globe. Like, subscribe, share, review us on iTunes. Hit that bell. Hit on that YouTube. bell. That bell. Gotta gotta hit the bell. You gotta get that notification. I don't know. These are, we just want you to listen to our stuff. Like how? Please do that. Yeah. That'd be it, cool. It all helps. Yeah. For sure. And if you want to help us out, review us, subscribe to us. Those sorts of things help. Send fan mail to Drew McMillan's email address. Sure. Yeah. Drew at game moose.com. Yeah. Uh, I'll get all of those hot emails. You don't want to send them to game moose.com, Drew. That just, that's a terrible place. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you no, want to go there. It's a placeholder website. <laughs> they're, they're just cyber squatting on our shit still. Ah, oh, that's all good. Yeah. Anyways, for Drew McMillan. And Brock McLaughlin, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 128 of the Game Moose Podcast, and we're out.